Welcome to Keep Trekking. Um, today we're just going to do a local walk. Please like and subscribe. Please share the videos with us, please. Wow, sun's a bit bright today. When I was a kid, where all these houses are, all this used to be three fields, and this where I'm standing now used to be, I think it was this one anyway, it used to be a football field. Um, used to have some really good times on here. Might be where these houses are, to be fair. But uh, used to have some really good times when I was a kid, lurking about, actually playing about on these fields. Used to love it. It's really nice. This other side of that tree line there is uh, where our old infant junior school used to be. Well, it still is, but where I used to go years and years ago, obviously. So now we're coming into um, pretty newish, not that new really, I suppose, housing estate. Today we're going to go uh, hunt for an old house and a dragon. <laughs> Stay tuned. Just walking towards uh, an old, old farm here on Town and Lane, from down that side. Uh, it's called Parsonage Farm. Now, I believe it originally belonged to the parson of Deepka and Bolster Stone. I could be wrong, but I'm sure that's what I've read somewhere. Not quite sure how old this place is, but I believe it's pre 14th century, so it could be 1300s and something. It's a very old building, originally a very, very old farm. Um, as you can probably tell in a minute when I get closer to it, I'm just trying to block this sun out. It's quite sunny today. Uh, cold but sunny. Just approaching the farm here now. Uh, obviously, it's a private dwelling, so I'm not going to show you too much. So, as you can see, the buildings, especially this barn. It's extremely old. If anybody knows anything about Parsonage Farm, please drop us a comment in the comments below. Now let's go and look for the dragon. Mandy, look at them views over there. I think you see in the bottom, the old deep crustacean. No transparency. And Warncliffe crags in the distance. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this camera but yeah that's one old farm here in Deepka Parsonish farm lovely let's go and look for a dragon just leaving another farmyard I think it's called Sunnybank farm I could be wrong not quite sure but now we're going to come to town and common uh, always close the gates behind you uh, so we're going to put the town in common now which will lead me down towards um, towards Wankley's side I'm not going out towards Wankley's side I'm just going to go down and see if I could see an old dragon and that's not a woman by the way <laughs> uh, quite a steep climb that not as fit as I was I need to get back uh, I think we're deciding this next summer if I can get this sun out of my eyes possibly June time to go up to Scotland and do the Antonine Wall 37 mile I think we're going to take it over two or three days not rush it wanted to do the West Island way but I don't think we're quite fit enough because we've not done a great deal recently. Uh, so I think we'll do the Antonine Wall, which is 37 mile, and then possibly next year we'll do um, West Island Way. Uh, it's a shame they cancelled on us last year. Can't be helped. So, if I 
can get this sun out of my eyes. It's quite bright today. Let's go on for a dragon. You know, sometimes it's just great to get out and experience. I mean, it's such a lovely day. Uh, getting out, doing a nice trek, going out into the woods and everything, it's just amazing. So superb. Um, it's good for mental health, it's good for physical fitness. I do suggest that more people get out there and do something. Um, after getting rained on the other day, uh, I'm hoping this GoPro is going to upload my material today. Um, it didn't work last time and it's not connecting properly to the computer so I'm going to have to sort that one out. My gimbal has given up the ghost. I've tried to use it this morning it's just given up the ghost but why wouldn't you want to do anything like this? It's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I urge people to get out and do something even if it's only a couple of miles. So let's go find a dragon. I remember me and Phil and Summer coming down here once and uh, it was a bit slippy and raining and we nearly went ass or tit coming down this section so you have to be careful because it's like that really um, it's quite steep and steep sorry not sleep and uh, <laughs> it's quite slippy especially with leaves on ground so let's see how we tattle this one and I'll see you at bottom <laughs> Well, I've made it to the bottom. It was a bit slippy coming down, but it wasn't too bad. I remember our summer, I got down to the bottom first, and I feel a bit further back, pondering. And now summer decided to run the last five or ten yards down, and she nearly ended up in there. <laughs> Good job I caught her just before she went in. Danger. Shooting range ahead. As you can see that sign there. Wow, Ministry of Defence. Wow, didn't know that. If I'm not going in there then I don't want my head blowing off. Not today. Um, wild camping, I'm going to get on to wild camping in a minute because we're going to do a bit of wild camping this year. Um, the only bit of advice I'm going to say is don't start fires. I don't agree with fires. Um, use more warm clothing to keep warm. Don't like fires. Leave no trace. If you're in wild camping, clear everything away. Leave nothing, as if you've not been there. That is the main. That's the main advice I can really give to anybody about wild camping: is leave no trace. It is all important to do that. Uh, and just enjoy yourself and make sure you pitch up. If you're going to camp on somebody's land and you're a bit wary, go and ask the farmer, go and ask the person that owns the land for permission. 9% of the time they will let you camp on their land. Um, don't do what we did and just presume that we'd be alright because we nearly got caught. Um, but we did clean up after ourselves and left no trace and nobody came to us, to us so um, that was okay but like I said leave no trace now this is a bit steep as well now I've got to come back up this way never mind good for my fitness isn't it I'll see you at the bottom of this one <laughs> just come off the beaten track for a second how nice is that like acorn leaves. Beautiful. Right. Nearly our destination today. This should be fun. <laughs> right then. My little cherubs. <laughs> Uh, 
I hope you can see it for the sun. The one play dragon. I think it's here it's in uh, Ed's in a few better days. But the wall is obviously its back and then they've made legs and then that's its head. The Wantley Dragon. How nice is that? Let me tell you the wee story. Don't know how good this is going to turn out with this sun. <laughs> According to local stories, the Dragon of Wantley lived near Warncliffe Chase in Yorkshire. He had seven heads and 14 eyes. Whoa, it's a big dragon then. Two huge wings on each shoulder. Well, he needed to fly, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, a long tail and claws plus 44 teeth and jaws. 44 jaws. It was almost, but not quite, as big as the Trojan horse, if you've ever heard of that. Google it, not going into it. Known for his, known for his runny nose and his burning snot. <laughs> Ooh. The dragon ate cows and even some trees. Indeed, local villagers were worried it'd eat all the forests up and eventually move on to horses and churches. Be a bit stunned then, weren't he? <laughs> Which were like just eating geese and turkeys for him. How can that be like eating geese and turkeys, churches and houses? Anyway. The dragon was even said to have eaten some people, including several children and locals were in despair. I think you would if your children had been eaten, don't you think? So they called upon Moor of Moor Hall, that's not far from here by the way, who lived nearby to help them deal with the dragon. Sounds like a warrior offering him all the worldly goods in return for slaying it. Moore was a man of famous strength. It is said that he was strong enough to swing a horse around by his mane. He agreed to help and went to Sheffield. to have some special armour made, uh, Sheffield steel. That's why he went to Sheffield. I was confused for a minute then. I thought, why would you want to go to Sheffield? I'm only joking. Let's have a look. The suit of marmot was covered in spikes, six inches long, made of the strongest steel. Well, it would be if it were from Sheffield. Moore looks fierce with the dressed in at that scar scared all the cats and dogs. Even I can do that, that don't take a genius, does it? Who thought, who thought he was some kind of huge hedgehog. <laughs> Sounds terrifying, does this more? When it came time for more to battle the dragon, all the local people wanted to see it, so they climbed upon the trees and houses. Some were perched on chimney pots and others climbed upon the tops of churches. Hold on. This dragon eats houses and churches, so why would you want to climb upon them? Makes no sense. Anyway, but Moore went to meet the dragon. He drank six pots of beer and he did this. Ah, he was pissed. He was pissed. No wonder he faced dragon. He was pissed. With cunning rather than a show of strength. No, he was pissed. So he climbed down into a well which he knew the dragon drank from regular to wait for him. He was a coward and all, a pished coward. Then as the dragon bent down to get a sip of water, he rose up and kicked him in the mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Right, okay. As he did this, one of the spikes of his armor went into the dragon's throat and cut his jugular vein. As the blood came pouring out, the dragon exclaimed loudly that Moore had murdered him. <laughs> well, that was his job. Then his head began to shake. <laughs> he trembled and quaked and fell down first on one knee. I think does dragons have knees? And then completely groaned and died. <laughs> so the dragon of Wantley was no more, thanks to Moor of Moorhall. What a legend. What an absolute legend that man is. Eh? All hail, Moor of Moorhall. Anyway, the views from up here are absolutely amazing. Just take a look at those. And there you have the Wantley dragon who was slain by Moor of Moorall back in ye old days old. <laughs> what a man. Now, I'm going to take you to an ancient monument that's meant to be a thousand years old. Let's come up this lovely path. Not so lovely at this time of year. But it's a lovely farm track. Just left, come back up to Sunnybank Farm. And now heading back towards uh, Stocksbridge Golf Club, really. Um, so let's go take you to an ancient monument around these parts. It's meant to be a thousand years old. Excited. <laughs> let's go. Old as low. The mound it sits on is reputedly reputedly be a th over a thousand years old but uh, apparently a Saxon chief is buried under there somewhere the cairn on the top was led by, delayed by uh, or built by Charles Macro Wilson some say 1840 some say 1870 uh, but the mound itself is an ancient burial ground so it's one of the oldest it's not the oldest things around here I'm on private land so I'm going to get off. How nice is that? I've got to say, it's lovely ain't it? See it's silhouetted, you can just get behind there. Beautiful. You can see that, it doesn't look massive from here. But you can see from miles around, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, back down to the golf course, across the golf course and on. Nice wee stroll that. Really enjoyed that. It was lovely. You can see Stocksbridge in the distance. Steelworks at the bottom. Don't know how good this camera's gonna pick it up. Steelworks at the bottom and then obviously houses running up towards the top end of Stocksbridge and then the moors further on. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. We do live in such an amazing place, I've got to say, I know I keep saying it, but it really is an amazing place. Well, that is basically all I've really got to show you today. Uh, an old farm that belonged to a parson of Deep and Bolsester one, I think. Uh, dates, really dates back to 1100s or 8, uh, 1300, something like that. The Wantley dragon that likes to eat churches and trees and Walder's Low, an ancient Saxon chief buried supposedly on that hill and a cairn that was laid or built by Charles Macro Wilson who was the lord of these parts who lived at um, from it all, which no longer stands, it's been knocked down. I think an American bolted, could be wrong, usually am. <laughs>
let's go across the golf course without getting hit by these wee balls that are hitting around. Catch up with you when I get to the other side. So we're nearly back, uh, nearly to the end of the course. So I'm going to cut this video here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, subscri all the subscribers that we've had. Not many, but would like more. Please like and subscribe. Share the videos, please. It really helps us out and it's much appreciated. Um, losing light, so I'm going to get back, get myself a coffee and something to eat. So thanks for joining me, till next time, keep trekking, Jay out.